welcome to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast where Jesus is Lord. We praise God for another day, for another privilege and a glorious opportunity to share with you a living word from God. And yes, I do have a word for you today. Please grab your Bibles. Go with me to the book of 2 Timothy chapter 3. 2 Timothy chapter 3. We left off there last week. We have been talking about for the last several weeks living effectively, effective kingdom living. Please make sure you have a pen or a highlighter some type of paper or book to write on and write with that's very very important uh, if you're just joining us for the first time we've been here for several weeks talking about living effectively how to live an effective kingdom lifestyle and we define that as living our lives in such a way that we have influence that we are successful and that we get results and we said that the importance of us living this kind of lifestyle the reason why God wants us to be the head and not the tail, above only and not beneath, the lender and not the borrower. The reason why he wants us blessed is to be a blessing. Your success in life has to do with the people around you. There are people that are coming into the world. There are people that are dying constantly, coming and going, come, coming and going. You're, you're, you're passing people all day, every day, coming in contact with people. And these people need to be reached. Don't forget, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. God sent his son into the world not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. And Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Folks, he's still interested in people not being condemned. He's still interested in people coming to a light of the knowledge of the new birth. He wants people saved. He wants them delivered. He wants them healed. He really, really does. And he's going to do that through you and me. And so it's important, I mean extremely important, to make sure that we live effective kingdom lifestyles. And I pointed out several things that will enable us to do that. One was that we perceive who we are. Get some the old broadcast. Write the radio station, write the television station. Wherever you're hearing this broadcast, they have the copies of it. Let them know you want the copies of the old ones. If not, go to my website at drgarengatling.org and write me and I'll send you these messages. Uh, free of charge, by the way. Um, and you'll find out that, number one, you have to perceive who you are. Number two, you have to find out your purpose. Number three, we left off last week, pursue your purpose. And we're going to deal with number four today, <clears throat> and that is preparation. Preparation. In order to live an effective kingdom lifestyle, <clears throat> it requires that you understand the process of preparation. You have to understand this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. For time in your word, we thank you for the blessed Holy Spirit whom you have sent to be our teacher and to be our guide. We expect him to live big in us today, to unveil, to unfold, and reveal the truth of your word to our reborn spirits, to illuminate our minds, to give us understanding. Help us to perceive and understand the truth of your word on how to live effectively, how to fulfill your plan and your purpose for our lives, how to pursue it and bring it to fruition that you might be glorified that souls may be won into your kingdom, that we may bring you honor, Father. That's what this is all about, and we thank you for it. In Jesus' name. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 3. Let's look at verses uh, 10, 11, and 12. The Apostle Paul is speaking. But thou hast known my doctrine, or fully known my doctrine, my manner of life, my purpose. That's what we're talking about. You've known my faith, my long-suffering, my charity, my patience, my persecutions. See, see what Paul's talking about? My afflictions, which came to me at Antioch, at Iconium, and Lystra. What persecutions I endured, but out of them all the Lord delivered me. Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. We're going to talk today about the process <coughs> of preparation when it comes to the pursuance of your purpose, when it comes to your quest for success, when it comes to your living effectively. There is a process of preparation. Now, 
Why preparation? Listen to me very carefully. We are going to face what we call the vicissitudes of life. Please get this, folks. You're going to face life. It happens to everybody. There has, there has no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. That's in the Bible. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. In other words, what happens to people in Africa happens to people in the USA. The same temptation that happened to people in Europe, oh yeah, it happens over in Canada too, and Great Britain, and in South Africa, uh-huh, where human beings, we go through what we call the vicissitudes of life, life's challenges, life's changes, we're going to face obstacles. Are you listening to me? The Apostle Paul says in our text, all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. You're going to go through some stuff. Now listen to me very carefully. Please write this down. A crisis becomes a much bigger problem when you're not adequately prepared. I'll say that again in another way. You're going to face stuff in life, folks. It's called the vicissitudes of life. Happens to everybody. Black people, white people, Asian, red, yellow, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter what continent you are. You're going to face life, okay? Now, when those crises come, if you are not adequately prepared, they become a much bigger problem. Folks, they can take you out if you're not properly prepared. This is why it is so, so, so important to prepare yourself. Please write this down. Preparation time is never wasted time. Preparation time is never wasted time. It's almost like an athlete that practices during the week before the big game. He or she knows that the big game's coming Sunday or whatever day that they designated play. And so they practice. They study the strategies of the person they're playing against. They, they sharpen their skills. Like if I'm a jump shooter or if I'm good at passing the ball or running the ball, I practice and I hone my skills. What? I'm preparing myself. See, we can understand that. Folks, it's the same thing when it comes to our purpose in life. You have to prepare yourself. You have to get ready for what God calls you to do. There's a process of preparation. Now, in order to be effective, you have to understand that process of preparation. Go with me to the book of Romans chapter 5. Romans chapter 5. You're going to need your Bibles. We're talking about living effectively for those of you that have just joined us. We are on our next point, which has to do with preparation. And we've already stated that uh, the process of preparation is absolutely vital when it comes to the fulfillment of your purpose or being effective in the kingdom of God. You have to be prepared. You have to. You just have to. We just read in our text in 2 Timothy, we're going to go through certain persecutions. We're going to face certain obstacles. We're going to face what are known as the vicissitudes of life. Everyone that lives godly in Christ Jesus, you're going to face this stuff. Okay? And so... If we're not adequately prepared, as I stated, those things can absolutely devastate us if we're not adequately prepared. Romans chapter 5, let's look at verse 3. And not only so, but we glory in tribulation, or we rejoice in tribulation. Now why? That doesn't even sound right. What do you mean I'm going to rejoice in tribulation? Well, he goes on to tell you why. Knowing. See, you have to know something. This is why you have to go through this process of preparation. Because it gives you a knowing. You have to know some stuff. Folks, if you're going to live an effective kingdom lifestyle, you have to know some stuff. You just have to. See? And that's where the preparation time comes in. And he says that knowing that that tribulation worketh patience. It's almost like um, I'm exercising my muscles. See, I'm developing myself. Do my, I rejoice in the tribulations. I'm learning from them. I, I'm, I'm, I'm learning how to use my faith in them. I'm learning to trust God. I'm learning the things of God. I'm exercising my spiritual muscle. It's working patience. And patience, here we go, experience. That's what I want. See, that preparation time is building in me a knowing I'm developing my spiritual muscles. I'm getting experience, see? And there's a process that you're just going to have to go through. You're, not, you're just not going to, bing, be 
all that God wants you to be, like ripe cherries falling off a tree. That's, that actually rhymes. You're not going to be what God has called you to be, like ripe cherries falling off a tree. You're going to go through this process of preparation that is so, so, so important. You're in Romans. Go to uh, chapter 12. Chapter 12. Let's look at verse... Uh, Let's just read uh, verse 4 on down. For as we have many members in one body, and all members have not the same office. So we have different offices, we have different callings, we have different purposes. See, so you have to find your purpose. So we being many are one body in Christ, and every one members one of another. Having then gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us, whether prophecy, let us prophesy according to the proportion of faith. Or ministry, here we go. Let us wait on our ministering. Let us wait on our ministering. There's a preparation time that's involved. Even, doesn't matter what office you're called to. Every member of the body has a part to play. Every member of the body has to go through this certain process. There is a certain basic training that every believer has to go through. There is a process of preparation that will give us knowledge, that will give us experience, and you're going to need it when you're out there doing ministry or doing what God has called you to do. And these things will undergird you as they prepare you for what God has called you to do. Now, a great example are the disciples. Did you know that the disciples sat at least three years at the feet of Jesus? They trained under him for at least three years. They got to see it firsthand. They sat down in his classes. Remember, he would teach people abroad, and then he'd get along with his disciples and expound things to them. So he taught his ministers. See, he would send them out on these little assignments every now and then, but he didn't release them into their full-time ministry until... They were endued with power from on high. They went through this process of training. They sat at his feet getting instruction. And then he said, now you tarry to you filled with the Holy Ghost, right? He gave, make sure they had power. So they had preparation time. They had experience. They were preparing at the feet of Jesus. And folks, we're no different. We have ministry that God has called us to. We have God's plan. We have his purpose for our life. And we're going to go through this process of preparation. That's why I believe it's important for every believer to have a pastor, to sit at the feet of your man or woman of God for at least three years and learn something. Learn about the ministry. Make sure the books that you read, the classes that you take, licensing and everything else you do, make sure they're all kingdom related and tied to your purpose. Prepare yourself. Folks, preparation time is not wasted time. It is to your advantage to be prepared. It is to your advantage to have a pastor. It is to your advantage to practice, to hone your skills, to wait on your ministry. The discovery of your gift. Please write this down. I got it from a great man of God, Dr. Miles Monroe. The discovery of your gift does not give you permission to leave. Did you get that? The discovery of your gift does not give you permission to leave. You found out that you can preach a good sermon, so you think it's time to go build a church. <clears throat> Folks, get prepared. See? Pastoring is not just preaching. There's counseling involved. There's an administrative part that comes with it. There's, there's a weight that comes with that office. Great responsibility. Souls' lives are in the balance. And if you're just thinking that you can preach a sermon that you're automatically a pastor and go start a church, I have news for you. That's not how it works. The discovery of your gift does not give you permission to leave. No. The discovery of your gift gives you an opportunity to prepare yourself, to hone your skill, to find out about that anointing that God placed upon your life. How to operate in that ministry. I'm doing it now. I'm studying behind other great men and women of God uh, that are teachers. Uh, the office that I stand in, the books that I read, I make sure they all pertain to that. I sit still in my church. See, just because I'm teaching and preaching on radio and television, I still have a covering. I still have uh, someone with a higher level of anointing instructing me. I'm still under authority. See, I'm preparing myself. I'm in no rush to jump out into the deep sea. I don't have a problem with learning how to swim in the shallow water. 
See, I already know that eventually the current's going to carry me out. And when I get out there, I want to know what I'm doing. And so it's important to prepare yourself. It takes preparation to live effectively. You don't want to jump out there and not know what you're doing. Jump out there, have no experience, have no confidant, no pastor, no one to instruct you, no one to counsel you, nothing. See, makes no sense. You have to be prepared. Are you getting this? Uh, write this down. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. Please write that down. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. That's a quote from H. Jackson Brown Jr. H. Jackson Brown Jr. The best preparation for tomorrow is doing your best today. Glory to God, I love that. That means today, I'm going to make sure I'm doing things that pertain to my purpose, that will make me better at what God has called me to do. I'm reading the proper books, make sure I have time with the Lord, prayer and the Word of God, um, with my church, make sure I'm properly connected. What is it that's going to propel me into my destiny? See, and the best preparation against that, I have to do my best today. See, all right, and then write this down. Preparation, preparation, preparation. Let's say it another way. Practice, practice, practice. <laughs> Just get in there, get in the Word of God, get in the tapes and the videos, get in the classes you need to be in, get your proper licensing, get all that stuff done. Don't be such in a rush. Slow down. It's better to be a step behind God than half a step ahead of Him. Did you hear that? It's better to be a step behind God than a half a step ahead of Him. You want, to, you want to make sure you're not getting too out there too. Listen, whatever he's called you to do, he'll make sure it's complete. He doesn't need you doing everything. You just do what he tells you to do. Do, what he, the, do the last thing he told you to do. They taught me that in the military. Follow your last command. What was the last thing he told you to do? The last thing God told me to do was, I want you in the media seven days a week. And I didn't, I didn't when, when he told me that, listen to this. Here's an example. When God told me that, I was sitting on my bed in the bedroom. Um, I was already in the media three days a week. I was on World Power Gospel Radio on Monday and Tuesday. And I was on the Now Network with Pastor Mark Burns on Wednesday evening. So, and, and folks, that takes time. That takes money. <laughs> I mean, it takes work. I mean, that's just, it's not easy. And so... When he said, I want you, I heard it right in my spirit. I want you in the media seven days a week. My first response was, yes, Lord. I've learned to do that much. It's yes, Lord, without questioning it. But I'm going to tell you this. In the back of my mind, I was like, oh, my God. <laughs> How are we going to do that? I, I, I'm, I'm serious. I didn't know. I was like, wow. I knew that it was going to come to fruition somehow, but I didn't know how. Let me tell you what I didn't do. I didn't get on the phone and tell anybody. I didn't tell my wife. I didn't tell the pastor. I didn't call nobody. I didn't put it on Facebook. I didn't tweet it. I didn't do nothing. Because <laughs> boss said, I knew enough that if that's what he said, then that's what he was going to do. See? And so I said, yes, Lord. That's what he needs for you. Yes, Lord. You remember Mary? When the angel came and made the announcement, she said, being unto me according to your word didn't make sense to her at all. She said, how is this going to die? I don't know. And the angel had to tell her, look, the Holy Ghost is going to overshadow you. And, blah, 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 blah. and she's like, okay, be it unto me according to your word. That's what I did. I was like, okay, media seven days a week, fine. I left it alone. As I was going to church, my bishop would preach and teach. And he would make little statements that would confirm what God had said already in my spirit. And he kept saying, stay the course. And I didn't tell anybody anything, nobody. He said, stay the course. And when my mind would start getting rattled, he'd preach another sermon. He'd say the same words, stay the course, just stay the course. So I just kept on staying the course. Some fella all the way in Texas <laughs> by the name of Milton Wallace contacted me. I've never been to Texas. Never. <laughs> this gentleman, he contacts me. He says, we've seen you on the Now Network. We saw your show. And then he began to give me his pitch. We have a program called All Nations Television. 
and we really would like you to become a part of that. And he went on and did all this talking. And I'm just, I didn't say nothing. I just sat there and listened to it. We're on the phone. I'm talking. And, uh, and I've never been to Tecla. And he said, well, if you decide to come on board, we'd like to give you Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday for one price. Folks, listen to this. I was already on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. God said, I want you on seven days a week in the media. So when he said Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, I was like, three plus four is seven. That's a week. Look, and I had nothing to do with it. I just stayed the course, prepared myself, stayed faithful with Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. God had a man contact me from Texas to put me on Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And here's the kicker. What it costs for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday is less than what it costs for me, both other programs and other nations that I'm in. And that's up. And it's all paid for, debt free. Why? Because when you find your purpose, you find your provision. I said that last week. See? When you find your purpose, you find your power, your potential, and your provision. And so we're completely debt free, seven days a week, prepared. Three years of radio, just sat still and did nothing but teach, teach on the radio. Just sat still and prepared myself. Stayed under a pastor. Stayed faithful to God. Fall on my face, get back up, stay faithful. Keep on teaching and preaching. Preparing myself. Going through this process of preparation, preparation, preparation. The best preparation against tomorrow was doing my best today. I just stuck with it. Stayed in the Word. Stayed in prayer stayed with it and next you know God adds on something else. okay now you're ready to do this then I was on the now network stayed faithful with that paid all the bills kept on preparing myself next you know God added on four more days I want you to meet here seven days a week see whatever he's called you to do he's going to do it through you see and, and, and your job is to make sure that you are prepared that was my point don't rush out into stuff if God told you he's gonna have you be a pastor just be still he knows how to get your elders and your ministry to lay hands on you and ordain you and license you properly and make sure you get out into the ministry properly. Don't run out there based off a bunch of enthusiasm and emotion just because you preach one good sermon. That doesn't make you a pastor. You need to be prepared. Please, whatever God has called you to do, the first thing you need to do <coughs> is perceive who you are. Get in the Word. That's first. The Word of God. Find out who you are in the New Testament. Find out your purpose in life. Begin to pursue it and go through this process of preparation. Allow God to mold you and to make you. And, and folks, that preparation process is a purging process. There's a work being done. There's a work being done in you. Um, there's some things God's getting you ready for. When you, receive, when you reach a certain level of prestige in any level of life there are some dangers out there you need to be careful about see um, one of them is the love of money the other one is lust for sex and power all those things sex and power and money that stuff's going to be around you the temptations are going to be there you need to be prepared for that see you need to learn how to continually walk in love God's got to make sure your love walk is right See, that you're not greedy for money, doing things with wrong motives, just trying to get a buck in your pocket to manipulate people to take advantage of people. There's a work that has to be done below it. There's a purging process that comes along with that preparation. And God knows that. And if you think he's just going to take you today and make you apostle tomorrow, that is not true. There is no leadership without preparation. You're going to have to be just like Joshua. You're going to have to sit under a Moses for a time. And you're going to have to learn some things. See, before you go into your ministry. That's just the way it is, beloved. So, relish and enjoy the preparation process. Do like we read in Romans 5, where the Apostle Paul says, We glory in tribulations. We know tribulations is work in patience. We know that patience is bringing about experience. And experience, hope. See, he, he, we know that. So, so we, we, we relax, we settle down in God. We wait upon the Lord. We minister unto Him. We stay faithful in our local churches. We stay the course with what He's already called us to do. And we go through this preparation process. Why? Because we want to make sure we're effective. We want to make sure we have influence and that we're getting results in life. And we do it with an understanding 
that souls' lives are in the balance. This is so important, folks. See? And so that's why it's so important. It's better to be a step behind God than a half a step ahead of Him. Just settle down. Whatever He's called you to do, He will bring it to pass. He needs you to prepare yourself. Stay the course. Purify yourself. Sanctify yourself before the Lord. Spend time with Him. Let Him work on you. See, and get you ready for the ministry that he has you to do. And it doesn't matter what that is. Apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher, finance, government, politics, whatever he's called you to do. See, you still have to go through that process. There is a certain basic training that every born again child of God has to go through. Period. Everybody has to go through it. And one of the best things you can do is go to the New Testament. I'll say it again. Romans through Revelation. You find all those phrases like in him, by whom, all of that stuff. Find out who you are, about the righteousness of God in Christ, how you're healed by Jesus' stripes. Find out about God's finance and tithing, uh, giving offerings. And you find out who you are and develop yourself in the Word of God. Begin to connect with people and classes and careers and jobs that pertain to that purpose. And go through the process. Get your proper licensing. Don't be so quick. Get up under your pastor and let God use him or her to mold you and to teach you and to instruct you. Remember, the disciples sat down under Jesus for three years, minimum. He sent them out on a little assignment. They got to use their gifts. They got to go out and preach. Remember, it's in the Bible. They got to go out and preach, cast out devils, heal the sick, come on back. All right, come on, let's do some more training, boys. See, and before he sent them into full-time ministry, and being due with power from on high. We got to get you prepared, see, because I'm sending you as sheep amongst ravenous wolves and you need to be wise as a servant harmless as a dove I gotta get you prepared that's what the Lord is saying today to his people I need to get y'all ready so settle down in my word find out who you are find out your purpose pursue it and go through this process of preparation so that you can live an effective kingdom lifestyle did you get anything out of this message today? That was really, really good when it comes to being prepared. I really, really enjoyed it. Enjoyed my time with you today. If you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I need to give you the opportunity now. That's my whole purpose in life. I want to get you born again and bring you to a light of the knowledge of the new birth. Say this very simple prayer with me. Say, God, I believe this gospel that was taught and preached today. I believe that your son Jesus bore my sin, that he was buried, that you raised him from the dead on the third day. And today I confess Jesus as my Lord. You've been listening to the Kingdom Seekers television broadcast. I'll be back again next week for another life-changing word from God. We'll continue our lesson on living effectively. Don't forget to go to my website, contact me, and let me know how you enjoyed this message and how this broadcast has been a blessing to you. Until then, remember, if you're not living a life of love, then you're not living yet. Write this down. <laughs> we write this down. So that's gonna be our new clothes. Hey, I hear you. Sounds good. All right. I've been uh, monitoring the time, and everything is good. Let me stop this.